Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. I've got a new map and some great players for you. Hopefully this will be a fantastic game. The map is Diversity EP and I've played this map exactly one time and it is a good one. Uh, it's got not an overloaded amount of mass. You've got maybe seven mass extractors per player plus a few expansion mexes. You've got some good solid reclaim in the large rocks, a frigate here and there, but nothing too extreme. And overall, it's just a map that encourages relatively good gameplay. So I would really love it if people would pick this up and play this map more because this is a good map as opposed to a lot of maps that are just kind of turtle wars. <laughs> you've got many different options on this one. You've got water and I would note that this is actually an island separated by a water channel which I did not realize the first time I played it so it adds a little bit to how the game works Navy is a viable option but not entirely recommended because the neck is so wide that you cannot really uh, effectively control the middle with Navy now this is a six no a Yes, yeah, six versus six. Let me go ahead and run through the player list for you, and we will jump into the action. We've got Exotic Retard going UEF, as well as Speed 2. And like I said, excellent players in this match. you got a couple above 2K, and the average looks to be around 17 or 1800. We've got De Commander, that is De Ithilus Quo, that he is going to take Aeon. We've got... <laughs> the ACU for Takedo. Everyone is renaming. He is going Cybern, and we've got Blodir as Cybern, and then Hepco taking Seraphim. So Blodir and Speed on the same team. That is a bit odd and throws the balance just a tiny bit, but maybe these guys can handle it. We've got Sui going Seraphim, and he is about to be aggressed by a Zui. I'm not sure if I can use that as a verb, but I totally am going to. Anyway, Yorick taking Aeon. We've got Mr. Mackie as Aeon as well. I'm assuming that this is kind of technically the air slot, but everybody has to run to the mid. We've got Kallus taking UEF, Chosen with Seraphim, and Ciro as Cybern. So we do have Chosen on the left hand side who is a 2k player but who has boo manipulated his rank downwards towards the 1800 range. Shame on you Chosen. Alright, so we've already seen that little piece of Seraphim artillery going for the island down there. Any early damage that you can do is essential especially if you can deny your opponent the extra power. It looks like Sui is actually depending on that Hydro for his build, and it is about to die. He only has two power generators, so that is not a good situation to be in. He is going to power stall very hard. Ciro is sending a mole across just to see what his opponent is up to, and it looks like he is going to drop a naval factory right off the bat. And you can see patrol orders going down for some areas with reclaim. We've already got the frigate down here manually reclaimed and things progressing all around the map. Now there were some civilian buildings there and there. You can see there's a stealth generator and a radar. Not a terrible bit of mass, but a little bit. It is useful. We've got some T1 Rex here as well. So it is not gonna lose you the game if you don't get it, but it is a helpful boost if you do. It looks like Exotic is going to claim this island without much opposition, but I spoke too soon because here comes Ciro and doing a load of manual reclaim as well, trying to get his eco up. I was hoping to see a bomber early from Mr. Mackey, but I don't think it happened. He did get the air factory down early, but nothing has come of it. And for some reason he built... Ah, it's two air factories. Never mind. I was curious about that. I was wondering why he built all of his power generators around a land factory. We do have a bomber, though. Bomber's meeting in the middle, actually. That one engineer is going to get zapped by the blue bomber, and the green is going to kind of hover around and look for a unit to kill, but it's not going to find anything and target the scout. And miss. Brilliant. The blue bomber is going to head back and... Bomb a factory. I was really expecting it to kill those two engineers. That would have actually been a nice kill, but no. He is not going to do the logical thing. Another bombing coming, maybe? Yes, killing off two engineers and damaging some power generators. More bomber harassment out here. That was a kill on that engineer and going to nail 
three more engineers. The UEF bomber is actually quite decent since the uh, aiming fix. Now that it can actually target things correctly, it actually does have a pretty good chance of killing stuff. And three bombs of the group dropped, and it is going to be enough to kill those two engineers as well. <laughs> That is a pain in the right buttock when you lose all of your build power and your base can't do what you need to. You got Mantis engaging with Auroras, the Auroras kiting away, the handy dandy scouts giving them the intel that they need to hammer away at maximum range. Looks like Retard is going to move down and challenge the middle. Ciro was able to steal this island right out from under Exotic Retard. Exotic is going to throw down some naval factories, but there is already a sub in the production. Now, I'm not quite sure. Yes, he's going to target the engineers. There we go. He's going to deny that, and then another unit will easily lock down naval control. On the bottom, we're seeing hover units engaging. We've got artillery spam crossing the water, but a T2 point defense going down from Hepco. He did throw down T2 on his ACU. Kind of an odd choice. I don't know why you would want to turtle in the bottom end of the map, but I guess it is going to work for him. I suppose he could throw the tack launcher upgrade on his ACU and probably reach a good portion of the map if he walked forward some. Yes, could probably deal a ton of damage to Sui. Seeing a small amount of air, mostly land, and lots of little engagements all over the place. Speed is going to claim these two mass extractors, and you may say, why build those mass extractors if they're just going to get killed immediately? Well, T1 mass extractors pay for themselves in 9 seconds. So if you can keep that mechs alive for 10 seconds, you are mass ahead, and anything after that is mass in the bank. So, always build T1 mass extractors when you can. Usually the gamble will pay off. It only costs 18 mass to throw it down. It's totally negligible, and you should be able to get something out of it. We got a frigate, and the sub, and the ACU hammering away on the production up here. That is going to be the end of the naval ambitions for Exotic Retard. And he is now drawing back with his tanks. Going to see a point defense going up here, but I don't think it is actually going to get up before all those tanks pour over those engineers and obliterate them, wiping them from the face of planet Earth. The ACU, though, is kind of on a rampage. He is plowing under the base here, killing off all of the power. Ah, that is painful to watch exotic retard i think was pulling some he was attempting to get full land spam online and go around but before he could get it up green was blocking his way and red just ran right into his base and caused irreparable damage he's down to 77 under 70 power income. He's about to start power stalling horrifically. We've got T2 point defense coming up from speed trying to stop the onslaught of this ACU, but the ACU is going to kill off the point defense with overcharges and main fire, and he's going to keep progressing. So this is not looking healthy at all. Down on the southern side, Sui looking very bad indeed. Blodier going to force him into the water with a T2 point defense. He was able to kill both the T1s, but shed way too much health doing it. And we have three ACUs pushing against one here. I get the distinct feeling that uh, Yorick is about to die a painful, horrible death. And holy cow, I missed an ACU death. I think that was a combination of point defense and tanks. I will catch that in the fast action replay. I do dearly love the secondary camera. It gives me a lot of forgiveness when I screw up in a cast. A lot to watch in a 6 versus 6 on a map like this. Alrighty then, in the middle we've got Yorick facing off against, uh, that is Ithalus. And the T2 point defense of Blodir. Blodir going ahead and point defense creeping right into the base of Sui. And when was the last time you saw a Cyber and point defense creep? I know it's been a while since I've seen one. Not exactly the most effective thing on the face of planet Earth, but if you have the eco to push it and your opponent doesn't really have any units in the area, hey, it might just work. 
although there is a vast swarm of Zooies headed northwards, so that would actually be able to run over those two Tech 2 point defenses, regardless of the, t of the uh, ASU sitting there. Although with the T1 point defense, it may get slightly, slightly harder. Yorick going to pull a veterancy off of all those units. He is going to survive quite handily, and these T2 point defense are going to proceed to fire directly into the cliff face. Brilliant targeting choice. On the northern side, speed is being pushed back by the combined might of Chosen and Callus. Looks like both of them do have the gun upgrades. Exotic Retard pulling in to soak up some damage, overcharging the point defenses to death. We've got T1 Bombers coming in to help out, but there are... Ah, yes, Swift Winds and Mercies. Ooh, there's about to be a Mercy Snipe. I do not want to miss that. Chosen trying to land some more shots on Speed 2 to get that health as low as he possibly can, just in case they have a double comm bomb here. Speed going to try to throw down another point defense, but... Those are going to be denied. It looks like Exotic Retard, for all of his ridiculous survival against that ACU push, is finally going to get forced into the water and speed along with him. That is not looking healthy. We have a drop. It is a beetle drop. Perhaps that is what killed that guy. And I'm here speculating, and all of you people are going to know exactly what killed him. Because you already saw it. We've got attack launcher. Where is Mr. Tack Launcher? Right there. That is the dreaded split tack. A fire long distance trying to hit an ACU and going to fail uh, miserably. It's going to be very hard to pull off a beetle drop versus swift winds. And I think that's been spotted. And there goes speed. Oh my goodness. That was a devastating loss to the right-hand team. They're now two commanders down. Ouchiwawas. There are T1 bombers everywhere. Anti-air going up. I did not expect Exotic Retard to out-survive speed, but it looks like he's going to go down as well. He's on 600 health and dodging for his life. All Callus has to do is walk up there and land a couple of shots, and he will be dead. Looks like a Mercy's coming in to finish it, though. Exotic Retard is in front of his anti-air. Oh, there it goes. Landed a shot from the Triad. There are now three members dead on the right-hand team. This is looking very, very bad. Bloat Air throwing down torpedo defense in the water, trying to force these commanders out. He does have T2 land online. He's got amphibious tanks and the dreaded Viper. And T1 land spam coming in from the north. Looks like Ithilus is going to start throwing down Oblivions. Problem with Oblivions is that they suck versus artillery spam. Very badly. So you have to build many of them and that is a major mass investment. Hopefully he can get some reclaim to make up the difference if he can force these opponents back. That is the big if there. So Chosen has double eco now. That is definitely one person that you do not want to have double eco. He is still spamming T1 bombers like there's no tomorrow. And why not when you have your handy dandy teammate building loads of swift winds for air control and the opposing team does not have any mobile flak in the area. They have one down here. Those bombers could potentially do a ton of damage. Sui is running as fast as he possibly can. Hepco, as predicted, getting the TAC missile upgrade, and that is going to start hammering away at Sui's base. Actually, it's probably been hammering away for quite a while. I just have not been paying attention to the southern side of things. Sui still being forced to run, and this is not good. He's going to end up running to the opposing base, and he's going to be very low on health. I think we're going to see our second death for the left-hand team. Ah, Swift wins from Ithilus. He's finally getting up some air to contest control, and we do have a good amount of interceptors over there as well. All right, it looks like the right-hand team has regained its footing. It is not looking excellent, 
but they have forced back all of that tech one spam. They've got tech two units in the field and hopefully they can start grabbing some of that reclaim, which is going to make the difference for their team. Sui's still having to hang around in the water here. Hepco throwing down a T2 launcher, which you can see the range on this is devastating. Sui will not be able to return to his home base unless he gets out of the water because he does not have enough health to brave that tech two point defense, although it is going up very, very slowly due to the high mass requirements. This is kind of what I like to see. There's no fire bases here. There's strategically placed T2 point defense to help out units that are progressing. Closest thing we got to a fire base is this without a whole lot of units to back it up. Very dynamic battlefield, which tends to make it kind of hard to track because there's a lot going on and this interceptor is a beast. It has 15 kills on that interceptor. <laughs> I think mostly against bombers because it's just been kind of swarming around this group of bombers forever and ever. 16 kills. Holy kashmolis. Oh, 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 oh. That's it for Sui. Kaboom! Combination of torpedo bombers and that T2 torpedo launcher. T2 torpedo launchers are brutal. Absolutely brutal. T1 bombers coming down south. Where are they headed? I do not know. May just be headed down for backup in anticipation of this base going down, hoping for unit denial. We got Ilshis coming in on the right hand side, and it looks like Callus has set up shop. He's got a T2 commander, he's got a point defense, anti air, and attack defense. He's going to stand guard over this side of the map while he reclaims. Excellent choice there. We've got all of these T1 bombers coming across where they are headed. I do not see, perhaps for a mass extractor. Maybe, maybe. Yes, for a mass extractor. Are they going to get the kill? Not on the first pass. If a single bomber gets around for a second pass, though, that will be the end of that mass extractor. And they will not. Excellent. Excellent denial. All right. The T1 spam is returning with some help from T2. And the northern side is not looking so good. Once again. do have engineer drop headed south going to dip a toe into that ever so tasty reclaim definitely the prime objective in a game like this is to claim as much reclaim as you possibly can so that you can throw a higher tier and vaster quantity of units at the opposing players engagement of the swift winds going to absolutely wipe out the entire interceptor force swift winds are brutally effective but there's a flag there that's going to put some hurt on that swarm uh, not really they did have a tight enough turning radius a few of them got damaged but uh not too bad bloodier and ithilis pairing up down here to deny that little bit of a push from yorick <clears throat> i think Yorick has the double gun upgrade, but not shield. He has a mobile shield. Yes, there it is. That is actually a fairly dangerous commander, but not as dangerous as it could be. All right, 15 minutes into this game, and holy hell, there's been a lot happening. It's finally starting to settle a little bit. Hepco venturing around to the southern side. I bet you that he is going for all of these mass extractors with his tack launcher. He is going to launch at all of these, and since the Aeon TMD cannot hit flyovers and has a very short range, these two tack defense out here are going to do absolutely no good. Mr. Mackey is about to lose a whole lot of mexes, and actually so could Yorick. This is about to get very, very bad. Looks like Chosen is still ecoing 
He's got all T2 mass extractors just about in his home base back here. He's got a few more to upgrade on the outskirts, but he has started the upgrades and paused them. And here come the tax. You better start building TMD there, bud, or you're going to lose all of your eco. Hmm. Where did it get hit at? That was very strange. Oh, he must have fired directly at the ACU. Well, that's a shame. Probably saw that he was an upgrade with a scout and thought if he could land two back to back because the Seraphim ACU actually does launch fairly close together with the T2 upgrade if you have full eco. Probably was hoping to land two tacks before, uh, before Mr. Mackey knew what was happening. Mr. Mackey would actually be a very good player to kill because he has most of the air. Oh, why are you doing that? You could have wiped out most of his eco by now, but instead... Oh well. What is done is done. Cannot help that. T3 air out for Mr. Mackey. He's got a scout first, then he's going to start building. Hepo, Hepco going to use his mighty reclaim to deal with these blazes. <laughs> Reclaim is much faster than building, so if you have really high build power on a unit, such as a T2 or a T3 ACU, you can reclaim units stupidly fast. A T2 ACU versus frigates is actually pretty dang effective if you just use reclaim. And he's going to move forward. If you do not have the gun upgrade, your reclaim is actually far faster than the damage your gun puts down unless you can overcharge. All right, now the T3 air is up. Ah, T3 air over here as well. Takedo is not going to be left behind. He does have a slight disadvantage due to the fact that he does not have double RAS, but he is going to push for T3. He does have an AC, not an ACU, a T3 engineer out. So he will be able to build himself some additional power. He will have the power. All right, T2 point defense online. Attack missiling the defenses of the other player, and he's going to start creeping his way sneakily up onto the beach. It's like a beach offense. Offense. Can you imagine in the Battle of Normandy if they had ACUs? Wouldn't it be awesome if someone did a scale model of Earth for the Subcom universe, and you could like reenact all of the famous battles from World War One, World War Two, um, across the European front? With ACUs, it would be epic. Like, a beach storming like this? <laughs> uh, that is what immediately popped into my head. I am a terrible person. All right. Seeing a little bit of a spat in the middle. Nothing really to be concerned about. Ithilus is going to move up north with his own gun comm. I don't think he should try to assault this base. It is not going to end well for him. There are multiple T1 point defense, a couple of triads, and a shield and stealth. Yeah, he's going to back up. Why is his ACU named DD? Oh well. I shall not wonder about it too greatly much. Okay, Mr. Mackey saying he's going to whip up some torps. That is probably for the gray ACU. Chosen has finished most of his T2 upgrades now. He is going to his last one. And he has capped off most of his mass extractors. I would not be surprised if we see a T4 very soon. We got a T3 power generator going down and he is shielding his vital structures pace of the game has slowed somewhat. Yorick, accompanied by his handy dandy shield generator, has been moving around and dealing with all of this pesky nonsense on the southern side. Pepco is going to try to get some point defense back up though. Blodier has hit T3 air as well. So it looks like we're shifting full into the T3 phase here. Not a whole lot of tech 1 and tech or tech one spam left on the map. It is mostly converted to tech two stuff. All of these assault tanks. 
and various and sundry other items. Ooh, Chosen looks like he's in a power stall, I think. Yes, he is a very hard power stall. He must be getting his RAS upgrade. That's the only thing that causes that much negativity in the world. Flak raping those Tech 1 bombers. Tech 1 bombers. Tech 1 air in general is no match for Flak. Flak just utterly obliterates everything that is thrown at it below Tech 3 and even does a good job against Tech 3 gunships. It, it is more than a mass equivalent for any of the Tech 3 gunships. You just have to remember that it's fairly cheap compared to a Tech 3 gunship, so you have to build a lot of it. Still surprised that I'm not seeing a T4 yet. I would have thought that I would see a monkey from Bloodier or something along those lines. We got T2 bomber stockpiling up here. No chicken queued up as yet for Chosen. Although he is building a whole lot of shield generators. Very slowly, with a single engineer, but he is building them. Seraphim shields take so long to build, but they are so powerful. Very, very tough to kill. Was that an attempt at a beetle drop? I think so. Kind of a uh, misguided attempt, considering the fact that there was flak there. Ah, look, a fire beetle. What do you know? Target that one and you can kill three. Oh! <clears throat> Master beetler. That was actually pretty cool. Ah, Ilshi drop. I'm going to drop on the end of the plateau and begin moving towards the base there. Not really a whole lot in the way of defense on this side because you don't expect people to be coming from a dead end. Getting invaded from the end of your own cul-de-sac. Oh! What? What? Beetle alert! No! You're walking into the... Oh my word! Holy cow! I think the ASF actually shot the beetles off the underside of the transport. Wow! Really? <laughs> that was so close to ending horribly. Chosen starting his second RAS upgrade. Sui saying to make T3 ACU and PDs. PD, PD, PDs. Where is his commander? Sui. Oh no, he's dead. I thought he was dead. I was about to say, he doesn't have a base. Okay, so I am assuming he is speaking to Callus, seeing as he is the only person with UEF. And yes, he is right up here in the position to make T3 point defense if he so chose. And he could creep directly into Ithalus's base. That would actually be a fairly good use of T3 point defense because there's nothing here that can stop him unless one of these cyber players starts mass spamming vipers and or we had sniper units, the sniper boats from Ithalus. Sniper boats could deal with it. Ah, we have Tech 3 mobile artillery. That works as well. Maybe a bit late to start that. Already have the T3 commander up here but it will help nonetheless. At a minimum, he can stall progress. Alrighty, Bjork has finally reclaimed most of this base. He's building his mass extractors back up. Pepco has taken up residence on the island here, and he is building a flak for himself to help deal with any air that comes in. And he's building a naval factory, which he is immediately going to tech to, and I bet he's building cruisers. 
I would bet money on it because cruisers are amazing and he would be able to park the cruisers right here, effectively control all of the air in the southern side of the map because it would be a no-fly zone and he would be able to bombard these two bottom bases with his cruisers. That is a fun sentence to say. Everyone say it with me. Bombard the bases. Harbies. I would be spamming more T3 mobile artillery if I were you, my friend. Because it is about to get hairy. <clears throat> Chosen is going T3 air as well, and he is now spamming T3 tanks. I want to see... Ah, there we go, a T4, finally! Callus is going to build a fat boy. Finally seeing a T4. My wish is fulfilled. Blodir not building anything. Gray is not building anything. Looks like we have an upgrade going down on the ACU over here. Not sure what, but I'm sure we will see in a minute. Mini flack. It's odd building titans at this point in the game. I'm wondering what the logic was behind that. Callus is actually going to retreat. He is going to leave his fire base there, assuming that it will be safe, and he is going to run off and do something else. I wonder where he is off to. This is kind of strange. He's just running to the water. Probably just getting the hell out of dodge while he can before he gets sniped. Because there's been multiple snipe attempts on this game. And a GC from Mr. Mackey. We're finally in the T4 stage. Wholeheartedly. Chosen looks like he is just going for Tech 3 Mass Extractors without building a whole lot else. He is just going to keep teching. Just keep teching. Just keep teching. As long as the other people aren't bothering you, I mean, there's no reason not to. And then when you have all of this extra build power and all of this extra mass, uh, you can just pretty much dump whatever you want onto the ground at a moment's notice. He's pulling in 215 mass per tick, violently upgrading a T3 mass extractor. So much mass consumption here and trying to assist. Oh, and he started a Yathoth at the same time. Why? He's over 100% overdrawn. I don't understand why he is putting himself that far in the hole intentionally. Down here on the southern side, Mr. Mackey taking air control, killing off actually all of the air. He has killed all the air. That is bad. Very, very bad. It's, uh, not Ithilus, Takedo is building strap bombers and stealthing them in the back. Hopefully they will go unnoticed and he'll be able to snipe someone. When you don't have air control, though, that presents some significant difficulties. There is a brave little harbinger running into the base and is going to take artillery to the base. And get tangled up with some engineers. Fire at the engineers. Stupid Harvey. There we go. This guy's going to try to reclaim it, but alas, you are no match for the Harbi. Going to kite all the way around into the base. Nothing can stop me now. Megalith going down for Bloodier. Bloodier skipping the Monkey Lord phase and going directly to the Megalith phase. And we have a Harbi sneaking all the way around the back of Callus's base to kill off those mass extractors. We got strap bombers in the north, but they have been pinged. I do believe Mr. Mackey knows that they're there. Yes. Chosen has got an ASF over there to harass those bombers. Bombers are now in trouble. And interceptors coming in. No, don't die to a cloud of ASF. That is not ASF. Interceptors, that is totally embarrassing. No. Run away. Ah. Anti-air on the back of that bomber is actually going to do something for once. Kill off a couple of interceptors. Alright, bombers are now safe back in the base. Callus is safe in the water, as is Chosen, who is getting yet another upgrade, probably T3. Just for the survivability. And that Harbinger is still doing work. 
He's got seven kills on him so far, taking hits from the T3 tanks over here, though, and that is going to be the end of him. So sad, so sad. But he did do a fairly significant amount of damage over there. I would say that was worth the mass. And here's the Southern Harbinger taking fire from T2 gunships. Also worth the mass. Killing off a T3 mass extractor and a being built mass extractor. And going to continue to kill everything. Brilliant. The veterancy is real. 47 kills. Holy kishmolies. <clears throat> That has got to be a 5 vet. Yes. Holy cow. Oh, he's loading a transport. What is he loading a transport for? Artillery, apparently. Ah, the fat boy lives! As does almost the GC. Megalith is about 75%. As predicted, here come the cruisers. <clears throat> Harvey has finally been dealt with, although not before massive damage was inflicted. I love heroic units like that. The little run-bys. Also, this is a memoriam to the red player. We shall forever remember him by his monuments on the island. It is all that remains of his once vast armies. <laughs> oh, nasty! Nasty. Is that actually his ACU? Is he really doing a comm drop at this point in the game with the air superior? Oh no, don't. Don't, don't, don't do that. Above all, do not do that. No! <clears throat> oh wait, that's his own cruiser. Derp! Now I feel ridiculous. Alright, so we've got multiple stealth units. Trying to pull back every time he sees... Oh, yes, the air is coming down. And he's been pinged. Unload. Unload. You don't want to die like that. These guys must have Omni. Somewhere. I'm not sure where, though. Let me see. Chosen. Yes, they have Omni. Where it is is irrelevant. That just means that they have Omni coverage. All right, Fatboy closing in on the right. This is about to get to be a little bit of a sticky situation for the right-hand team. It is very hard to deal with the Fatboy. Cruiser is probably about to get torpedo bombed to death. Mm, yes, there it goes. But there is another cruiser and not enough T2 bombers left over to deal with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit of a thing caught in my throat. Alas, the Harvey is no match for that fat boy. So sad, so sad. So, Ithilus Quo has his own naming unit. Or naming mod. The Overcharge. The Unit. The Spam. The NG. This is actually kind of funny. I like it. Actually, I think he's renaming his mods, his units manually. De lazy. Because not all of his units are named, so I don't think it's a naming mod, and here comes the ACU drop. No! What are you doing, you lunatic? He's dropping inside the shield to overcharge the fat boy. Oh my word. No! You're going to die! He can overcharge the Percival and the Fat Boy in one shot. There it is, and is dead. If he can overcharge the Titans. Oh, he has the Mazer. What? Brilliant. Nice. Oh, that's epic. That is the epitome of the Rambo comp right there, folks. That is how you do it. But now he's under fire from the T3 point defense. He's going to hide behind this little rock outcropping and reclaim the fatty. Maybe he can hide. I don't know if he will be totally safe. There's a Galactic Colossus rapidly closing on him. But there is also a Megalith there. And he's taking strats to the face. No! Don't die! Down to a thousand health. I believe he is toasty fried. 
Run away! Run away! And boom. Well, Taquito, it was a valiant effort, but in the end, you failed miserably. Oh well. <clears throat> Here comes the Galactic Colossuses. Megalith gonna kite backwards. Galactic going to run away. Megalith needs to go forward again to finish off that kill. Strat Bombers coming in. Oh, the air superiority is brutal with this game. And here comes the chicken for the southern side. You know, that was the epitome of a valiant effort from the right-hand team. But I think this may spell defeat here. This chicken is approaching an undef... Oh, no! There's a Megalith! Bloatier proving me wrong. That Megalith is actually going to finish in time to kill this chicken. We may sustain some damage to the base, but it will survive. Strat Bomber is still harassing this poor Megalith. Need to get... Ah, there we go. T3 Mobile Anti-Air moving out. And so many Strat Bombers coming in for Bloatier. Run away, my friend! You do not want to be standing there. He has a Sam. And he is rapidly building T2 shields to help cover himself. But the problem is, he now is dealing with a chicken as well. Which is going to kill his power and his shields. But air running, taking strats. No! One more strat and he's done for. ASF, a single ASF. No! He's gonna die to the chicken. Oh my goodness. That's gonna take out both of the Megaliths. They had a sliver of hope remaining and I think that just ripped the rug out from under them. Ah, uh, No. The Athotha actually did die, but not before it killed the ACU, so it is a moot point as of now. Alright, gonna bump up the speed and we'll finish out this game real quick here. It's basically just waiting for everyone else to die at this point. Here comes the Aeon Strats and all other manner of strats. Gonna kill off Brown. Ithilus is going to die somewhat valiantly. He held up a very strong defense for a long period of time. And all that's left is Hepco. I don't think there's much he can do. He has a lot of cruisers. He does have that going for him. Cruisers are extremely helpful, but he has a very small amount of water to hide in and not any eco left after these titans get or no those are harbingers after those harbingers get done with it and his cruisers are falling rapidly the galactic colossus is actually just going to be able to stand on the edge of the water here and zap all of this to death and then those guys can torp bomb him here come the solaces one good pass at that acu and i think he will be done for trying his best but the best is not good enough at this point galactic colossus is going to obliterate all of the stuff that he has and it's his choice does he want oh he's gonna get stomped on and torped hepco is dead repeat hepco down all right that is the end of that game it was a little bit of a failing proposition for the right-hand side. It was a long, slow decline from which at a couple points I thought that they were actually going to make a comeback, but overall, that's a pretty dang epic game. And this is a good map. You guys should definitely try it out. Alrighty, that is going to wrap it up for me for this game. And uh, I, just a quick reminder, the Insanity t Cup is returning, so... You need to stay tuned for details on that, and if you have any clips that you want to submit, I'm making the promo video actually today. So, uh, if you have any five second clips, go to the forum link in the description and send those over to me. I will include your name and your epic shot, and uh, you'll get a chance to be in the promo video. A lot of people are going to see that, and I need some cool stuff to throw in it. So, if you want to participate, definitely go down there, and then in a week, I will be debuting the promo video, and in a month we're having another Insanity Cup. And just a little teaser, there's not a one versus one tournament this time. It is going to be a team effort 
objective-based. I'm not going to give out the rule sets just yet. That's going to come out next week, but it's going to be a pretty crazy game type, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it on some different maps. So, with that, I am out of here, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next cast.